Have you ever seen a tree made out of crystal? If not, join us in today's episode. Today on Destination Now, we go to the Petrified Forest National Park. Come along and find out what we find. See what we see. Let's go where we go. ADD like crazy. <laughs> Wherever I go, I will always know Everything I need is right here with me It's time to let it all go, no matter who knows Anything about me now I'm ready to see what life's got for me I got one thing left to say We invite you to join us in the Petrified Forest National Park. We're going to take you guys on a few hikes and check out a few different areas of interest. We got a super secret special pass. Whoa. Annual park pass, baby. Pretty good. How you doing? arrived at the Rainbow Forest Museum. We're gonna take a quick peek inside and then I believe there is a trailhead for the giant logs around here. Hello, welcome. Here we go. This small museum is a great way to kick off the petrified forest adventure. It quickly takes you back in time. It's one of the best places in the world to see the fossil record for the late Jurassic period. In here, you will find many fossils and artifacts from the past, not just trees, that tell you the story of the park's history and discovery. On a separate note, this national park is one of the few that is dog friendly on all of its trails. They just ask that you obtain and agree to the rules of their free bark ranger pass before exploring with your pet. Do you agree to be a bark ranger? All right. Give me five. Woo! This is the giant log trail and it looks exactly the same as it did in the 1930s. They got pictures inside. It's crazy, they haven't touched any of it. This is four-tenths of a mile paved loop. It's pretty easy. They got a little trail guide here for different numbered stops that you can learn some things about on the way. Approximately 216 million years ago, these trees died and fell into a river. They were buried beneath layers of silt, mud, sand, and volcanic ash, which protected them from decay. Mineral-laden ground, water percolated through the layers, carrying the silica from the volcanic ash and other trace minerals. The absorbent dead wood became saturated with these minerals. The silica or quartz crystals slowly bonded with the cells of the trees, replicating organic material in perfect detail. Eventually, silica replaced the wood material. Now this petrified forest is not made of trees, but of stone. This petrified forest of the Petrified Forest National Park is actually just a big old log jam in a river that got buried under all of this material and slowly became stone over millions of years. And the giant log trail happens to house some of the largest logs in the park. This is really cool. I'm really glad we did this. You guys got to come here. This place is special. It, it's hard to catch the depth of what's going on on camera because it's not just the petrified wood. It's the clouds in the skies, the badlands behind us, there's tons of cliff drop, and the cliff drops are so far away, we can't quite pick it up on camera on the level that you can see it here. But if you look really close and use your imagination, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's a really pretty landscape out here. Some of this wood looked like it was cut by an ancient lumberjack. They wasn't, they didn't exist back then. The way the wood's petrified, the quartz actually fractures at the shortest path possible and that's just how it breaks apart when it's put under pressure. 
The log behind me is called Old Faithful. It's the biggest log in the park. It's 35 feet long and 44 tons. It actually got struck by lightning in 1962 and the park actually added mortar down here so it would slow the erosion and we wouldn't lose that log. It's mighty hot out here. The sun's pretty intense so we got lots of water for Trixie. Dogs burn their feet when the ground's hot so you gotta be mindful of that. Always take your palm, put it on the ground and if it's too hot for you to leave your palm there, it's too hot for the dog. We got booties for her and she's not used to wearing booties so it's pretty funny to watch. Enjoy. <laughs> she looks like a horse. She's only ever worn one or two and she's injured her feet. She's never worn all four. So she's good and used to it right now. Anyway, we just arrived to the Crystal Forest. This is a three quarter mile loop where you can see the best of the petrified wood. And inside this wood, there's actually crystals embedded in it. Crystal is just another form of quartz. Sparkly. is the coolest tree graveyard I've ever seen. I guess it's more like a rock graveyard at this point. You can count the rings on these things. That one's nearly all crystal. So once again, nobody cut these trees into these little perfect round chunks. That's due to pressure. And just the way the quartz cracks when it's under pressure, it takes the path of least resistance and it just so happens it's right through the middle. your first crystal forest. Oh, it's magical. Quite magical indeed. I dig it. Yeah, I, I, I think it's really cool how some of these logs are just still all in form even though they've broken apart and they're, you know, just laying out there. It's almost like somebody took a chainsaw and chopped them up, they're but they're not. It just, it <laughs> that's just the way it rolled, you know, it cracked and fell apart. Pretty neat. I like it. And it's really nice, no one's touched them in hundreds of years. They're exactly where they were when they discovered them. Yep. Guys, it's 84 degrees outside. It's not too terribly hot. It's hot enough for Trixie to burn her feet, but it's been really nice because we just crawl back inside our camper to take a cool break with the AC on, and we don't have to run in the generator with all the noise. You like wearing mama socks? <laughs> She's like, I'm ready to go, guys. Let's go, I got shoes and socks. The agape bridge was created by water, and water is slowly destroying it. This tree grew in a subtropical forest approximately 217 million years ago. When it died, it washed into a river and had a quick burial under river sediment. Millions of years later, rivers and streams eroded away the massive layers of rock to expose the fossilized tree. Inevitably, water now carving a small gully underneath will ultimately cause its collapse. A supportive structure was added in 1917 to attempt preservation of the bridge. This is the steep one mile loop Blue Mesa Trail, which allows visitors the unique experience of hiking amongst the Badland Hills, rich with bluish benetite clay. It's here that paleontologists have found numerous plants and animal fossils in the sedimentary layers of the Blue Mesa, giving us vital clues about the past. It's hard to believe that this desert was once a prehistoric rainforest with lush green vegetation and hundreds of different thriving species. In the 
Today we're doing the Painted Rim Trail. A two mile round trip, it takes you down to the Painted Rim Trail Visitor Center. So it's partially paved, partially unpaved. It actually gives you a great view of vast landscape out here. You can see forever, it's pretty cool. So the Pacific Rim Trail kind of just parallels the highway here. So if you're not much of a hiker, you can just pull off in the lookouts and see pretty much the same view. Otherwise, it's kind of a Nice little way to get up close to the cliff and see all the painted hills out here. The Highway of Dreams. Petrified Forest is the only national park in the country with a portion of historical Route 66 within its boundaries. You are currently standing where the Mother Road used to be with the line of telephone poles paralleling its alignment through the park. This stretch of Route 66 was open from 1926 until 1958 and was the primary way millions of travelers initially experienced the petrified forest and the painted desert. Imagine driving to this spot in the 1932 Studebaker before you do, when this road was in its heyday. This here's a 1932 Studebaker. Studebakers are steeped in American history. They were one of the first cars to be able to make it across America on Route 66, including the Rubicon Trail. They're very tough. Woo! Made right. So we got really lucky that this happened when it did. I just pulled into this parking lot and my throttle cable just took a shit. So luckily, this motor's got enough torque to pull itself along into a parking spot. So we're gonna do that and figure out what the heck's going on. This linkage right here took a shit. That's a bummer. Oh, that's all right. I can fix it. Yeah, my name's Nick Sutton, and this is Baby Blue. Yeah, I think that'll work. So I took one of these little bungee deals. We have a bunch of these and I looped it around the linkage and it's holding it on there. It allows it to flex and everything, which is good. I think we'll be able to finish out the day and make it to the auto parts store because if that breaks, I got a bunch more. So let's go have some fun. Way to go, Nick Giver. <laughs> Nick Giver. So we are currently at Puerco Pueblo. The Puerco Pueblo is a third of a mile loop amidst the remains of a hundred room Pueblo occupied by the ancestral Puebloan people over 600 years ago. While the meanings of many petroglyphs are not clear, several are solar calendars. Some mark summer or winter solstice, with others indicating both equinoxes. The ancestral Puebloan people may have used them to manage ceremonial and agricultural activities, and the accuracy of these calendars today is amazing. This 
spot's called Newspaper Rock. They've got a viewing platform with some binoculars so that you can look down onto um, hundreds of petroglyphs, apparently. I'm not sure we'll get a shot of that for you, but we'll see what we can do. This is called Jasper Forest. It gives you a very vast 360 panoramic view. Forest. I'm currently doing the Long Logs Trail. Uh, it's a mile and a half, but you can attach it to the Agate Trail, which is another mile, I believe. And what the Long Log Trail is about is millions of years ago, there was a river rushing through here and all the logs got jammed up at a certain point. So there's a log jam down here somewhere and then it all became petrified. It's got the longest trees in the park. This trail really leads you out into the middle of nowhere. trail has a house at the end of it. Well this is an example of a gatehouse. This one's believed to be built between 1050 and 1300. A single family home. They would enter through the roof into the house and then they would have the storage underneath a lot of times. It's fully built out of petrified wood and mortar pretty cool. You'd have an endless supply of petrified wood out here. There's a lot. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed the journey this time. Uh, we've seen some wonderful things here and I'm glad we're able to pass it along to you. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you click that like button for us. Let us know you liked it. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Follow us on our next adventure. We don't know where we're going, but we'll let you know when we find out. See you next Tuesday. Well, that's all, folks. All right. Okay.